There was once a young boy called Max, who lived with his mother and father in a charming house that suited the three of them perfectly. The family was not exceptionally wealthy, but they had never struggled financially. Both Mr. Marshall and Mrs. Marshall prided themselves on having well-paying jobs, but also jobs that they liked, which is hard to come by these days. As Max was an only child, he was the apple of his family's eye, but occasionally lonely. And to counter the loneliness, he spent a great deal of his time playing with toys and games that he had accumulated throughout his childhood. Both Mr. Marshall and Mrs. Marshall had large families. For Christmas and his birthday, Max always received a huge array of toys and games. However, over time, Max became unaffected by new things and his attention span shortened. There came a point in time where Max would rip off shiny wrapping paper, glance at his new immaculate toy and hastily set it aside before reaching for the next. His bedroom, which had once been tidy, was now littered with unopened boxes. The carpet was home to games of all shapes and sizes, his shelves lined with unopened books, his cupboards bursting with colour, colour that shouted out for attention. Max's disinterest quickly turned into disgust. He wasn't satisfied unless he had the latest gadget, but if given a gift that he had absolutely no time for, well, he wouldn't hesitate to express his disappointment. Look at all these amazing presents you've been given, his mum exclaimed one day. I haven't seen you play with that remote control car that Auntie Lindsay bought you last year, or the colour changing felt tips that Grandma and Grandad bought you for Christmas. I don't want any colour changing pens and cars are boring, Max replied, crossing his arms and pulling an unpleasant face. Mrs Marshall became sick of Max's attitude. She had grown up in a modest household and presents had been a great luxury. She began to take away Max's toys one by one. And each time she did this, she left a small pile of coins where the abandoned toy had sat. Max didn't notice that first. He had so many things that his bedroom resembled a toy museum. However, eventually, Max caught and on to what his mother was doing and he queried her. You can have it your way, Mrs. Marshall told her son. Seeing as you don't like your presents, you can have the money back for them instead. Max didn't think much of this. In fact, he quite liked the idea of having money rather than things. He concluded that it was much better to have money than toys, as he could spend the money on what he wanted, rather than have family members send him silly gifts. Max saved up his coins for a little while, but the opportunity to spend his money always eluded him. He was at school every day, and after school he was busy with extracurricular activities such as tennis and piano lessons. By the time the evening rolled around, the shops were closed. At weekends, his parents insisted that he spend time with them, and when Max did get a chance to take a trip down to the toy store, the only things that caught his eye were the toys with price tags scary enough to send Max stumbling out of the shop. Max began to get bored at home, with nothing but metal coins to play with. He marched around the house, looking very cross indeed, feeling very sorry for himself. I'm bored of this now, he declared to his mother. You haven't learned how to appreciate, said Mrs Marshall, who was reading a newspaper and didn't look up. I have, I want my toys back. Listen to me, we are the ones that determine the worth of material objects. It's not about how much money you spend on something, my dear, but the meaning behind that present. You should be thankful for everything you are given. Mrs Marshall's words should have journeyed to Max's head and stayed there, but unfortunately they bounced off the hot white frustration that had taken up residence in Max's mind, and therefore Max turned to his father. Mr Marshall had a soft spot for his son, and was a lot more laid back than his wife was. He was also rather oblivious, and hadn't really noticed what had been going on between Max and Mrs Marshall. Mr Marshall was not a fan of drama, and he often used money as a means to settle disagreements or to relieve himself of rather sticky situations. So when Max approached him, 
Mr. Marshall thought that he couldn't possibly go wrong by offering his son some money. However, he got a real shock when Max stamped his foot, flung his head back and screamed in protest. Whatever is the matter, Mr. Marshall said aghast. I don't want any more money, Max shouted and stormed off to his toy museum. Mr. Marshall stood stock still, heart hammering. Max flung himself on his bed and refused to move until the next morning. When he woke up, he was surprised to see that the pile of coins on his bedside table was no longer there. However, in its place was a pile of teeth. Max ignored his parents and was in a constant state of agitation. The claws of discontent had caught hold of Max's heart and every so often they squeezed. Max came home every day from school to find that his money was gone. His money was gone, but instead Max had acquired piles of dust, pockets full of pebbles, a wallet stuffed full of rubber bands, beads under his pillow. He desperately gathered together the last of his coins, but the next day there were simply toenails. Max roared in frustration and flew down the stairs into the living room. Stop it! He cried. Stop it, stop it, stop it! Stop what? Said Mrs. Marshall, who was looking alarmed but not surprised. Mr. Marshall was simply looking alarmed. You've taken all my money and now I don't have anything! He screeched. That's a slight exaggeration, my dear, said Mrs. Marshall. My money is gone. All I've got now is dust and dirt and teeth and all these other useless things. Is this about money and toys again? Mr. Marshall said dazedly. You should be thankful that you've still got your bedroom and this house and your friends and your family. Mrs. Marshall exclaimed. Everything is useless and you're the most useless things of all. Now that's enough, Max. You better stop right there. If you carry on like that, you won't have any friends left or- Mrs. Marshall stopped abruptly. Give me it back, it's not fair! Max yelled. We haven't taken anything. Yes you have, and now I've got nothing! Max, said Mrs. Marshall quietly. This attitude has got to stop right now. And let me make something clear. You should be careful what you wish for. Max had nothing to say. So he kicked the sofa in rage and ran up to his bedroom, which was no longer a toy museum, but an ordinary bedroom. He lay on his bed until it got dark and he heard his parents come up the stairs. Mrs. Marshall opened the door a creak and popped her head in. Max, she whispered. Max didn't reply. Max, I can't hear you, you're nothing said Max recklessly, and after his mum shut the door, he listened to his heart beating frantically. He fell into a fitful sleep, and when he woke up, felt guilty for the first time about what he had said. Light was streaming through his bedroom window. He got up and padded softly to his parents' room. He knocked once, twice. When he knocked a third time and there was no answer, he pushed the door open softly and stared. There were two pairs of slippers on the floor and the covers on the double bed were rumpled. There were two indents in the pillows just as there should have been and the sound of silence, the sound of deep sleep. However, when Max flung away the bed covers, there was no sleeping parents, just two large hollow piles of nothing. Max's lip quivered and finally he understood what the word appreciation really meant. He also realised despondently that his mum had been right, that worth was a thing determined by people.